The EU is falling into the ground right now and this is spreading like a virus throughout the world. No country can support all of this debt and we're looking at this happening right now particularly in the eurozone. The deflation is a major risk to global growth. Let's get into that right now. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. This is out of the Wall Street Journal. Eurozone stagnation poses major risk to global growth, according to the OECD. They also said this, but I just wanted to mention this, that we have to hear it from the OECD, or is it tomorrow the IMF, or is it another country? The fact remains is that we know the truth. Yes, we have a big problem out there, but the solution that they provide is this in the subtitle, currency block needs monetary stimulus softening of fiscal discipline to avoid persistent low growth. And what exactly are they saying? Well, the first thing is monetary stimulus. They need QE. They're going to say, look how well it worked with the US. All they had to do was print several trillion dollars and that got the economy going again and then they also said softening of fiscal discipline that means relaxing the rules allowing people to have the quote-unquote ninja loans that we saw in the US no income job or assets and other things that led to the bubble which burst which caused all sorts of a domino effect afterwards that's what they want to happen in euro you already have this major problem in the eurozone because of the mistakes of the euro system itself of one currency one interest rate but again they're going to allow them to gamble far beyond what they were doing before this whole system of the eurozone is incorrect and is designed to fail and here they are we're going to see something really really bad coming out of europe and it already is a big problem look at this out of bloomberg they did some amazing statistics here falling wages in Europe hit youth the hardest. Countries hit by the European debt crisis such as Spain and Portugal are at the forefront of wage deflation. So look at this right here. You can see the charts for yourself. But it's not just the youth that are experiencing this right here. I want to also highlight the fact that unemployment rates there are dramatically high right now. This is a big concern because, again, you're not building that strong middle class. These are just two of the countries, but it is spreading all around the world. And wage deflation is a big problem when other prices are not going down as well. When you're looking at home prices, for example, if they're not declining, you're going to have people unable to support themselves. They're going to have to become renters. And then, of course, if they get into a worse situation, they're going to have to depend on their government. And we all know where that heads. Let's look at this right here, how the EU plans to turn $26 billion into $390 billion. Yet again, more schemes and scams that they're willing to draw up and they are going ahead with this the european union is planning a 21 billion euro that's 26 billion dollars fund to share the risks that's what they say share the risks of new projects with private investors to officials said the question i have is who is going to bail these private investors out when this collapses because we know that it will what happened to fannie mae and freddie mac they had the worst of the worst mortgages and what happened that's right the u.s taxpayer has to foot the bill for that and that's exactly what always happens every single time and that's no different right now we're seeing it in europe we're going to see it happening over and over again in my book i talked about europe and how that connects in with the u.s and I said this, although Europe's problems pose a more immediate threat, the US dollar looks to be fading away from its role as the default currency around the world. That's very true in many ways here. So let's look at Europe right away being the biggest 
problem right now. They're experiencing deflation, they have the high unemployment rates and everything else. But the US dollar will not be able to withstand the amount of debt that they're currently accumulating. There is so much debt. I even uh, just covered very recently how they had to print up $29 trillion in order to support the economy. This is something that is not on the books. And of course, yet again, we had the off balance sheet things like Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. When you add all this up, we know where the U.S. is headed. So let's go on to that right now. Talking about currencies, this is Nigeria. You know, a lot of currencies here around the world, they peg their currency to the U.S. dollar. And this is in order to increase stability, but this changes very often. We even see this with Switzerland pegging their Swiss franc to the euro. This is something that can't be um, sustained for a long period of time, and it makes them have to print currency for a, a period of time. So we're doing this here and looking at it, and you can see how they have to continuously print money, devalue their currency in order to manage this. So let's look at RT, but the information is out of the Financial Times, the top four find banks. And you can see Bank of America, Citigroup, JP Morgan Chase, and Wells Fargo. But the reason I mention this is that, sure, they're being fined hundreds of millions of dollars. These are big fines for their criminality of the things that they have done. However, the amount of money they received in bailouts is so significantly more than this. It's nothing. It really doesn't mean anything. They use this information so that they can show in the mainstream media, look, we're, we're giving, getting them in trouble, JP Morgan Chase, even though they have, uh, you know, maybe 75 to 90 trillion dollars worth of derivatives on their books, we're going to find them 500 million or whatever it might be. And the public doesn't know about the derivatives. The public, in fact, those who do know, apparently don't care about it. In my experience, it's quite uh, interesting to, to look at. It's very unusual. But however, to stay on this, basically what we're looking at is the government and the bankers in collusion with each other and they're never, never going to really put a serious fine on them, so serious in fact, that it will shut them down. That just isn't going to happen. Let's move on here. Out of Bloomberg, while company shift addresses to tax havens, CEOs stay put. And the reason I mention this is you can see how the businesses are fleeing away from the U.S. because they don't like the tax laws. They don't like what's happening right here in the U.S. And, you know, this is they're going to different regions, mostly the areas where they are sheltered from the high taxation people do not want to have taxation. They'll do whatever it takes. When you add in the Obamacare, the 21 new taxes that it adds on, they're not willing to deal with that and they just end up shipping their money out into a different country. This is bad to do this, but unfortunately that's the way it goes in this capitalist environment. They're just doing what they have to to increase their corporate profits. Right here, this is just some information I wanted to show you and how it relates, you know, 100 years ago till today. And right here talking about Germany saber rattling about territorial claims in the Middle East and Africa. That was back in 1914. And we have similarities today with China saber rattling about the territorial claims in the South China Sea. You have religious unrest in both instances and so on and so forth. You can read it for yourself. But we're seeing a lot of things happen throughout history history and they continuously repeat. You can read this document for yourself. It's actually very, very long, but uh, it also is very interesting. And we see the cycles occurring over and over and over again. They keep making the same mistakes. So if we use that data to predict the future, particularly in the near future, we know that we're headed for danger. And that is a very big concern of mine. Then I want to get into this because the mainstream media is something that we need to look at very clearly and really 
analyze it. See, the mainstream media, not only does it just give you information, give you data, it actually puts a spin on that data. And if you really read into it carefully, if you study it, not necessarily look at the information, but actually study the way they output that information to you, there's definitely a slant on it. And you'll see this in most of the mainstream media out there. But let's look at the information. Let's do what I do at the Money GPS and just simply give the data to you you make your own decision so let's look at this right here total since ferguson we're looking at the wounded people that have been injured and uh, shot and killed with these uh, violent crimes that are occurring this is in chicago alone since the ferguson shooting michael brown august 9th to november 24th 155 people have died in chicago alone but nobody is really looking at, at that. The mainstream media simply will not cover that, but that's the reality. That's all this happens. They're able to use one instance and blow it up and make it the biggest thing in the world. Meanwhile, they're not focusing on the other things. They use things as a distraction to get you away from that. Yes, they printed $29 trillion and they use that to prop up the banking system. But don't look over there. Look over in the Middle East. There's bombs flying. There's a lot of guys, you know, bad things are happening over there. Look over there. Look over there. But then when they need to cover up something like Benghazi, they point over in a different situation and they keep doing this all the time. It is actually quite sad the way that they're able to manipulate the public. But I hope that you will do so. Read into the information deeper. Do your own research. Make your own YouTube videos. Share what you can and just continue to learn because knowledge beyond all other assets. People are always asking me what is the most important important asset number one beyond everything else is knowledge that is definitely the most important thing for the future if you found this video informative please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to become an insider the insiders is where i give out all my best intel for free and that is available at themoneygps.com scroll down to the bottom fill in your email address and you get occasional emails from me with good short concise info